Now then, let's uh, bring you the very latest on the press preview. A first look at what's on the front pages. On our press preview tonight, we'll be joined by the Daily Mail's consultant editor, Andrew Pierce and the Daily Mirror's associate editor, Kevin McGuire, um, both with us. Uh, well, I say both, but you're here on your own at the moment, Kevin. We'll get to Andrew up very shortly. Um, let's look at the front pages, though, first of all. The Financial Times leading with the latest from Russia. The headline, Putin makes nuclear threat as he mobilises the army reserves for war. The Metro goes with reactions from the Russian public to Putin's threats. The headline, Russians see red at Vlad. The Daily Mail shares Prime Minister Truss's response to Putin, we won't be cowed by nuclear threats, warns the UK leader. Truss's reaction is also told by The Telegraph, headlining her words, desperate Putin will be defeated. The Guardian has President Biden's condemnation as he calls for a united response. The Times also leading with President Biden's remarks as he brands Putin's comments as reckless. On the cost of living crisis, meanwhile, the eye has Liz Truss's economic promises, warning the Prime Minister may be taking a gamble on tax cuts. The Health Secretary promising all patients must get a doctor's appointment within two weeks is on the front of the Daily Express. The Mirror leads with the ongoing search for Olivia Pratt Corbell's killer with a record reward of £200,000 now being offered to help find the gunman. And the Star has the headline, E.T thrown home and a call for secret space documents linked to Prince Philip to be released to the public. Well, don't forget, by scanning the QR code you'll see on screen during the programme, you can check out those front pages of tomorrow's newspapers while you watch us. So let's go to uh, Andrew and Kevin there. Sorry to come to you late. Obviously, breaking news from the United uh, Nations General Assembly. Um, and indeed, the situation in Ukraine and the response from uh, Russia dominating many of the front pages tonight, including the FT, Kevin. No, absolutely, uh, Anna. We, we've just heard a very eloquent, defiant speech by uh, Zelensky there, but uh, we heard a rather rambling, deranged speech earlier in the day from Vladimir Putin um, calling up reservists, 300,000 in Russia, a sure sign he's losing. We, we see the papers are reporting the uh, protests in cities, including Moscow and St. Petersburg, his own city, against this, uh, but also that uh, threat to use nuclear weapons, saying he's not bluffing well. If he uses tactical nuclear weapons in Ukraine, that would pose a real uh, issue for uh, other states. But if he fires off intercontinental ballistic mess missiles, well, nuclear deterrence has, has failed. And I suspect there would be retaliation and, and mass, uh, mass murder on a huge scale on all sides. But uh, it, it's very serious. But he's clearly rattled because he is losing that war. His, his aims were to essentially conquer Ukraine in a matter of days and uh, months later he's now being pushed back so it's absolutely serious and it's absolutely dangerous um, but you've got to you've got to hope that he actually is bluffing on nuclear weapons. Yes indeed there are so many serious elements to this the mobilization as you said that nuclear threat but also um, in the quote from Joe Biden that the FT lists there as well um, Andrew um, Joe Biden hitting out at Putin's overt nuclear threat uh, but he also said this war is about extinguishing Ukraine's right to exist as a state plain and simple that should make your blood run cold and this breaking all UN charters from a permanent member of the Security Council. How, how can the UN exist as it does with the flagrant abuses by somebody who's a permanent member of that council? It, do, it, does, it does call it the whole thing into disrepute, really. And I mean, people will say they've got to, it's better to have Russia there than not there. Um, but uh, I mean, he's a renegade, he's a pirate, he's, he's breaking every rule under the sun. The, the, the occupation of Ukraine is illegal. It has been since 2014. There are war crimes being committed on a daily basis. Uh, graves of civilians and soldiers have been discovered. Many people have been tortured. Uh, and um, and it, 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 But I think there's, in a funny sense, I think the, the rantings and ravings of Putin today, which have dominated so many front pages, is, is a real sign, actually, that perhaps we're getting close to the end game. Putin is in trouble. I think he knows it. Um, and the fact that um, disturbances have broken out, I think, in 38 towns and cities across Russia, 
Uh, thousands of people have been arrested. It's a positive sign. Um, of course, it needs a lot more than that to topple him. But um, there is unanimity uh, amongst the United Nations Security Council, America, Britain, uh, standing shoulder to shoulder. I just wonder about the timing of Putin's uh, speech, knowing that so many uh, uh, of the big, big, big countries are in the United Nations today. Uh, and yet, and on the same day, we learn that five British uh, nationals have been released from Ukraine who were being who were under Russian captivity. What's that about? Is that in the spirit of compromise? Is there any joined up thinking going on here? Or should we not read too much into it? Does the right arm know what the left arm's doing? I'm not sure it does. Yes, um, one inflammatory, the other conciliatory. As you say, it's fascinating. Yeah. Um, the Daily Mail quotes Liz Truss. There are words now coming out about what she's likely to say at the UN General Assembly. Um, in about maybe 45 minutes, it's hard to tell because we saw Zelensky going on rather longer than his allotted time. Um, but he's, uh, she is apparently to tell world leaders uh, that they cannot be complacent as free societies face a real struggle against authoritarianism. And it does really feel like Russia has completely slipped back to this, you know, the, its olden days totalitarian state, does it not? As we, you know, we look at all of these, uh, the, these headlines, Kevin. Oh, oh no, absolutely. Uh, it's the... Putin would like to rebuild the you know, the Soviet Union that uh, that fell, and many in Russia still consider that a huge national humiliation. Which is why, when Gorbachev died, he's seen as a great hero across much, much of Europe. There was no state funeral in in Russia, and many people did not mourn him. But the the whole question around the uh, Security Council and permanent members and Zelensky picked it up. Why no India? Why no Brazil? Because it was really created after the Second World War. And there's those five permanent members on the Security uh, Council: the, the U.S., Russia, Britain, France, and 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 China. It's kind of out of date, really. And uh, I'm with Biden and his criticism of uh, Russia and an unprovoked uh, invasion of Ukraine, but. You know, U.S. foreign policy uh, across much of Central America, South America, parts of Africa, Afghanistan, and and uh, and Iraq and Vietnam has been really interventionist in the past and has killed many many people and never respected the sovereignty of states. And uh, in the U.K., I don't think we've got clean hands either over Iraq or Afghanistan or Libya where our interventions uh, cost uh, many, many, many lives. Kevin, so, yeah. I'm just going to butt in. We've got, we've got one minute left. I just want to get to another story very quickly. Andrew, uh, the eye, uh, warning over Truss's gamble on tax cuts. Just very quickly on that, if you can. Well, this is the Institute for Fiscal Studies saying if her, if her pitch that um, by cutting taxes, um, overturning the corporation tax rise, reversing the national insurance rise, if it doesn't stimulate the growth that she says it will, that it could cause a real debt problem and a potential run on the pound. Now, the Institute of Fiscal Studies is very respected. They're just making a prediction saying potentially if, if, if it doesn't work, but that's the plan she's decided on. It's clear blue water between the Tories and Labour. She thinks Andrew, uh, whether it's... Uh, yeah. I've got more breaking news. Apologies. Very quickly. Oh. 215 Ukrainian prisoners uh, have been released from Russian captivity in another prisoner swap. This is in exchange for 55 Russians and uh, Viktor Medvedchuk, which is a loyal ally of Putin. We've been waiting for that one. We will talk more.